My name is Anne-Marie Zwack. I self-identify as an artist. I even went to art school. But I think we are all artists. Creativity is our birthright as humans. We imagine, we problem solve. When kids are five, everybody draws, sings, dances, and plays. By the time a lot of people reach high school, they've decided they can't draw. By the time many of us reach adulthood, we've forgotten how to play. Our culture has relegated creativity to a select few. Art has become rarefied, something seen in museums and galleries. I find my calling in working with communities who want to express themselves through public art. I find community with the Community Built Association, a professional group of artists, architects, and builders who facilitate community engagement in the design, organization, and building of creative projects for public use, such as parks, playgrounds, murals, and sculptures. We share recognition for the human need for connectedness and a commitment to the positive value of communities creating and strengthening themselves through cultural action. This, whoop, this is the First Street Mosaic Project. It's on the walls of a City of Ithaca Department of Public Works facility facing the Science Center. I'm on a team of artists that have been working with community volunteers to make this mosaic for the past three years. Charles Eisenstein, one of my favorite thinkers, says, for a multitude of reasons, we need to need each other. Community is a group of people who form around common needs to support each other in meeting those needs. As you know, humans are, are social creatures, and our relationships with each other are extremely important to our health and well-being. Our sense of well-being derives from what political psychologist Robert Lane calls warm interpersonal relationships. Certainly, that's what Ithaca College Hope would develop when they sent crews of incoming freshmen to help us mortar and grout. In a monetized society, we pay people to meet many of our needs. Our cooking, our childcare, gathering our food, making our clothes, and our entertainment. The people who deliver these goods and services are often seen as interchangeable. With enough money, we don't really need anyone. Without needing anyone, we lose natural community. Isolation is the unintended consequence of many of today's modern conveniences. How can we connect? With awareness of the personal and societal benefits of being engaged in community, many people are finding diverse ways to cultivate connection, focusing on interdependence rather than independence. Whether it's community-supported agriculture or meal train, local alternative currency or clothing swaps, co-housing or car shares, people are developing creative ways to acknowledge and grow these peer-to-peer -peer support networks. Community-built public art is an upstream approach to personal and public health. It's a concrete way to make choices about the design of your local environment. And it's a way in which you personally can engage. I've been using mosaics to work with groups who want to collaborate to change their built environment. That's Charlie up there on the ladder. He's the town supervisor of Richford, New York. He's worked in the building trades for decades. His wife, Vicki, leads a local Girl Scout troop. He makes most of our concrete. She spearheaded volunteer coordination. Four generations of Richford residents lined up in the town hall during an April snowstorm to make handprints in clay. I love how accessible, how fundamental clay is. It's the earth itself. In molding clay, we get a very direct experience of shaping reality, of bringing something new into being. It doesn't matter your age or your skill level. You can make a mark in clay and probably enjoy the tactile nature of doing it. Like PJ here, who with the help of his parents made hand and feet prints. Each tile is unique and recognizable to its maker. 
Trace made the um, Trace made the jumping trout and the fawn. Piper and Dara made the hawk. Jocelyn made the fox. Together, these distinct tiles combine to create a more complex overall composition. What a wonderful metaphor for the way individuals form community. Each voice is important. Together, much greater complexity is possible. When communities have a chance to shape their built environment, they see their own ability to affect positive change right where they live. When people get together to create physical, real-world structures to meet common needs, they build bonds of human connection. It's empowering, and it has ripple effects through the individuals involved, the larger community, and the physical space. Last year, I was invited to work with the girls at the Mariposa Center in Cabarete, Dominican Republic. The Mariposa Foundation works to end generational poverty by investing in the lives of girls. In meeting their goal of empowering girls, they knew that community-built public art is a powerful tool for social change, including healing, increased awareness, attitudinal change, more diverse and increased civic participation, movement building, and policy change, to name a few. How does it work? First, the people who participate experience the validating and often rare opportunity to see their ideas directly shape public discourse and design. Volunteers engage their own creative nature Manifesting ideas into reality is empowering and highly practical with a wide range of applications. A sense of pride and stewardship remain once the project is complete. Secondly, the act of making art together builds human bonds. It takes trust to be creative with each other and builds trust. The finished artwork um, reflects the identity of the community that made it. And there's a sense of belonging in the physical space and within the group of people who changed it. Eisenstein says, intimacy comes from co-creation, not co-consumption. Thirdly, there's a change in perception among the people who visit. Visitors get a sense of wonder and joy at the beauty created by a group of people with the will and the power to transform their environment, socially, physically, and even politically. It's inspiring to witness a space transformed by the people who use it. There's a sense of respect for the art and the artists that usually protect this kind of public art from vandalism. Watershed Wall is made up of tiles contributed by every school in the Ithaca City School District. It's mounted in an alley on the wall of a parking garage. It's been up since 2010, and it's never been vandalized. There's an awareness that everyone is a stakeholder in this kind of public space. Lily Ye, the barefoot artist, says, art is a human right. Engaging our own creative nature gives us the power to transform reality. And in doing so with others, we, we foster relationships, which are the most important thing we can cultivate as human beings. They strengthen our communities and give our lives meaning. I want to encourage each of you to reclaim your creative birthright and make something beautiful with the people in your community. Reclaim public space with collaborative testaments of roots. What's the need in your community? It might be making public space more useful, beautiful, or safe. Perhaps at a park or a playground, a, a bus stop or a traffic intersection, or a vacant lot. You can exercise your power to affect change with the help of your community for the benefit of all. Strong, healthy communities foster health and well-being among people. Creating community-built public art is a dynamic way to activate warm interpersonal relationships 
and positively impact your physical environment. Please, tap your own creative nature to reshape the public sphere. Thank you.